Hello everyone. So I welcome you again in tutorial number 15 and that is for course on VB Excel programming. Today we will learn about count and sum during loops. Whenever we are looping using loops say for a for next set loop, how we will count and sum during the data reading or data writing. So let's start. I welcome you. My name is Saurabh Jain and the website hope you all know is bi-analytics.org. So when we talk about sum, let's look into the steps for i is equals to 1 to 5, sum is equals to sum plus i, next i. What does this mean is that we need to understand the concept of sum is equals to sum plus i. In starting we can write sum is equals to 0 because total starts with 0, fine. So now we can say for i is equals to 1 to 5, so every time i will change, i will become 1 for the first time. And it says sum is equal to sum plus i. What is the current value of sum? Add i into it and then save into sum. So it will be 0 plus 1, sum will become 1. Now next i, sum will be 2. So current sum is 1, 2 plus 1, next sum will become 3. Then the i will be 3. Sum is equal to sum plus i, which means 3 plus 3, which equals to 6. So it will be again loop like this. So we need to understand sum is equal to sum plus i like this. Always remember first left the right side is solved and assigned into left side. So what is the current value of sum? We will add i into it and then we will save it in sum variable. So now sum will become the total of previous sum and next value. Fine. So this is how sum works. So right now it is i. This can be any value reading from Excel, like we are reading a data range a1 dot offset i comma 0. So we can sum that value also. So every time we do, the value will change. Fine. So this is the sum algorithm. We have to remember sum is equals to sum plus the value that we want to add. Fine. Let's do an example to understand it better. Excel. So we'll go into developer, visual basic, insert, module, fine. So now let's write some program, sub, sum, underscore, example, fine. So now dim i as integer, dim sum as integer. Now I say for i is equals to 1 to 5. I say next i. So now when I do sum is equals to sum plus i and say I say message box sum Fine. Let's run this program. So answer comes. I'll write the mistake. Sum is equal to sum plus 1. This was the mistake. So I have to write i. Else it will add 1 5 times. Run this program. So here comes our 15 answer. Same way if you want to sum till 300. Run. Now it may give overflow also overflow. Why? Because we have taken integer and integer takes only 32,000 values. So I say debug and I have to use sum as long. Fine. Now let's run this program. So here comes our answer. Fine. So this is way we can use sum. Now imagine 1 plus 3 and instead of message box sum here I write inside it so every time you do sum you will get the output let's see 
run. First answer is 1, then next will be 2, so 2 plus 1 is 3, now next term is 3, 3 plus 3, 6. So if we keep it inside, it will give us the running total. If we keep it outside the loop, it will give the final answer. Fine, hope you got it. So this is how sum is done. Now, instead of say sum is equal to sum plus i, I can write another number, say dim n as integer and every time I ask n is equals to input box. Enter number. Fine. Now sum is equal to sum plus n because every time the value is in n. So we need to sum n and always what you can do is in the starting you can write sum is equals to 0. So in starting it will be sum equals to, never write equals to 0 inside the loop. Always in the outside the loop. So now if we run this program and you write message box sum outside the loop. Fine. So let's run this program now. Now it asks you for a number. I say 5. Okay. Now it will ask for another number. 7. Now I ask 10. So 5 plus 7, 12 plus 10, 22. Here comes your answer 22. So this is how we can do sum. Fine. Okay. So this is the way we do sum. Now when we talk about counting, we have the same logics. Understanding count algorithm for i equals to 1 to 5 but count is equals to count plus 1. So every time we want to count a new instance, we have to increase by 1. So this is the same logic we use count equals to count plus 1. Suppose there are we are reading a data which has something and we want to say if this is less than 0, count is equals to count plus 1. So at the end of the loop, we will come to know that number of count value means the total number of items or instances which are less than 0. If instance is less than 0, then count is equal to count plus 1. So whenever it will be less than 0, it will increase the value 1, else otherwise it will not. So this is the way we can do the things, fine. So let's do an example. We have been given sales data. Calculate total sales, fine. First of all, we need to sum all the values. Count number of times sales is greater than 1000 and total sales when greater than 1000. So we need to write total sales, number of times the sales is greater than 1000 and total sales which is greater than 1000. So this is the task we have to do, fine. Second is write running total in adjacent column. So this we'll do later on but let's do the first column exercise. So I have a data. Let me open another instance of Excel. We have BBA tutorial 15 in which I have written the data. So this is the data of sales. Fine. You can see 100, 200, 500, 1200, 1500, 3000. So we need to first of all do the sum of everything. Total number of items are we have 21 and first is a header. So we have total number of data is 20. Fine. So let's write the program to do this thing. Developer basic. Insert module. Fine. So, what we need to do is SUB sub sales underscore total. Fine. This is the dim I as integer. Dim, we can say total, total, we can say TS, total sales as integer or dim TS thousand, which means total sales greater than thousand as integer, fine. Now I say for I. Okay, we need one variable as well. Dim count as integer. So these are four variables we need. 
now let's do for i is equals to 1 to 20 let's read it out how to read let's take one variable as well dim sales as integer now i have to read a sales every time so i say sales is equals to range a1 dot offset i comma 0 dot value fine look now this line should be very clear we have done so many examples if you have typed all the examples with your hand now you understand it sales is equal to range a1 dot offset i comma 0 dot value this you when you read this statement you should be able to understand that we are we are reading data from a2 a3 a4 a5 till 20 values fine okay now there are two things first of all we need to do sales for everything total all values so i can say ts ts is equals to ts plus sales like sum equals to sum plus this has been done now there's another sale okay one more thing we can do is we can in starting right ts is equals to zero and ts thousand is equals to zero fine now this has been done now we need to check if sales is greater than or equal to thousand fine then what you need to do you need to write ts thousand is equals to ts thousand plus sales fine and you also need to do count is equals to count plus one count is equals to count plus one fine let do count is equals to zero in initial so this is a program now i have to write and if we have to write next time calculation has been done now we need to write the data either we can write the data in the excel or we can use in message box so let's do message box once again for a practice message box fine what we need inverted commas total sales m percent vv tab m percent total sales in ts variable ts fine this we done now we need to change the line so we say m percent vblf line changed m percent now we need to say total items greater than thousand total count of items greater than thousand m percent vv tab m percent count it will come in count count fine this has been done space now what we want to do is we want to write the total sales as well so i again that m percent vblf for line chain sorry vb tab no vblf we need to change the line right so total sales greater than thousand total sales greater than thousand vb tab ts thousand so this is a program right what it says i did some mistake yes i forget to write m percent Again, I forget to write m percent m percent and again m percent m percent fine yeah now let's run this program run so we say total sales is equal to this much count of items greater than thousand is equal to force and total sales of greater than four is 
This thousand item is seven thousand seven hundred. So we have got the answer. Look, this is the way. Let's see how many items are the greater than four. Can we check? Let's see. First of all, we can say all equal to. Here comes the answer correct. If we say greater than thousand items, one, two, three, and four. So if we control, control. Yeah, come 4,000. So this is the way we can check how it is done. So hope you are able to understand what we have done. Now we want to write running total like this. 100 plus 100 here. Then it will be 100 plus 200, 300 here. So let's write running total. Let's go back. Yes. This was a code we have done. Now we also want to write running totals. So running total was where? Where we have TS is equals to this one, right? So this is the total sales, which is the running total for us. So now we can write range B1 dot offset I comma zero dot value is equals to TS. So TS is a running total. Look, when we write TS after a loop, it has done the final sum. But now if we write like this, every time it will give the total sum. Let's run this program. Run. And see, we have got the answer in our Excel sheet. So we have 100, 300 like this. So it's so easy to calculate all these things. Hope you are able to understand how to use loop, sum, count if, how to use count, how to use sum, how to use if. Count and sum are not functions. These are the variables we have used. But yes, we know now the process of summing during the loop. We know the process of counting during the loop. Hope you are able to understand. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask in the comments. And yes, I also teach online. If you want to learn or join my session, Please contact me either by commenting me or on the website bi-analytics.org. So remember to join my website bi-analytics.org. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Look forward to meet you in next video tutorials.